Good afternoon YouTube. Um, <clears throat> today we're going to start a new series and this is the introduction video. It's going to be a learning series and we're going to talk about vacuum tubes. Um, there's not a lot of call for vacuum tubes these days. Most everything is solid state, transistor or uh, integrated circuit. Um, but a lot of uh, audio buffs Guitar players, bass players, uh, people who are considered audiophiles, have high-end equipment, already know what vacuum tubes are. And uh, hopefully this won't get too technical for some of you. If there's uh, questions you have, uh, put it in the comments and uh, I'll try to answer them. I am not an expert, but uh, I know a lot about tubes. I know a lot about a lot of stuff. And hopefully I can share some of that information uh, with all of you through this series. We're going to start with vacuum tubes and uh, I'll go through the basics, uh, the different types, uh, their function, how they work, and uh, probably move on to uh, tube amplifiers, um, the differences between tubes and transistors as far as sound quality, um, etc. Um, and where it goes from there, I have no idea, but we shall find out. These are all vacuum tubes. Um, the ones here in the back row are some of the oldest ones that I have. Uh, most of these are from uh, the late 20s, early 30s, into the 40s. Uh, they're all radio tubes. Um, this is uh, These are all amplifier tubes. I don't have a rectifier. There's a rectifier tube in this front row, which is basically a diode. Um, I'll get into the details farther. Uh, as you can tell, these look much older. The style of the glass. This is actually the oldest tube that I have. It's an O1A. It's from a mid-20s homebrew tube radio. Um, it uses three of these tubes. They are part of the tuning section as well as the audio output. That's a very basic uh, tube. and. Uh, I mean, all these in the front row are more modern. This is from a this is the smallest tube that I have. It's from a Motorola handheld portable. It's not actually handheld. It's it's uh, called a handy talkie. I think it's from the 50s. Um, it's a portable transceiver that the fire department would have used or um, something like that. Uh, it is a glass tube. It is coated with a, a, a conductive coating. There's one of the terminals connected to this ring around the bottom that uh, shields the tube against noise. And uh, all the tubes, this one I believe is from a television tuner. Uh, these two here, this is a more common tube. Um, guitar people should know this tube. It's a 12AX7, very common preamp tube. It actually has two sections inside. There's actually two amplifiers in one. The 12 signifies that the heaters in the tube require 12 volts um, or you can wire them in parallel and it can run on 6 volts. Uh, this is a, a metal tube uh, out of a 1950's car radio. Uh, I guess they thought the metal would be a little more rugged. Um, these are also preamp tubes I believe. This is a broken tube. This is a I, uh, I'm going to use this one to disassemble it and show you the actual inside parts of the tube that, and what makes it work. This is out of a television. It's a, a multi-function tube. I don't recall what it would do. This is actually a, a radio frequency power amplifier tube. Um, this is a rectifier, a 5Z3, brand new, out of the box. This is an 807 another common tube that's not so common anymore. This is actually what you would refer to as a gaseous regulator, I believe. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with the number 8013A. Uh, this tube was given to me. It is also new in the box. Um, this is a very complicated tube. This is called a Vidicon tube. It was the predecessor to um, modern cameras, video cameras. Uh, this actually picked up the image through the lenses onto the face of the tube here 
and it kind of works opposite what a CRT does. It actually changes the image into electrical signals which were then sent out to be edited and everything like that. This is brand new also. And this is a heavy duty industrial type tube. It is air cooled. Notice the fins. This one is no good anymore. Um, most of the time these big industrial tubes they will rebuild. Um, they separate the tube, put new parts inside and reuse the cooling fins and they rebuild them. This one is no longer supported. They don't rebuild this one anymore. So that's why I got it. A tube like this would run about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. New, uh, rebuilt, you could probably get one for about six to eight hundred dollars. They're very expensive. Um, the larger ones, the twenty-five thousand watt tubes and up, cost significantly more. This one I believe is about uh, four thousand watts. It was used in an RF generator in the industry. So that's basically the intro of the series. Um, I will try to get down to the nitty gritty of it. Hopefully you will understand and follow me. If not, like I said, uh, leave comments and I'll try to answer your questions in another video or in the comments depending on uh, you know if it's, if it's something that I drastically uh, failed to put forth and I'll redo it in the video so that everybody can benefit um, but if it's just something that you're stuck on I'll leave it in the comments and I'll try to get to answer it for you